by calling me an evil name. And as such, you do not have the right to, re to disrespect 1.6 billion Muslims on the face of the earth by disrespecting the Prophet Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because we do not do it to you. If you feel that you want to put a picture of Jesus Christ in a museum with piss on it, remember that? Six years ago, when Giuliani was, was a man, they had an exhibition of art, remember? When they had a picture of uh, crucifix of Jesus in a bottle of urine. They called that art. They had a picture of the Virgin Mary. Now I'll be pleased with it. With the both, with a picture of it with cow doodle on the picture. They called that art. They had Jesus Christ on top. Check this out. They had Jesus Christ on top with a tie-dye shirt. Now, how are you going to teach your children to respect God, to love God, to respect these prophets when they turn on the TV, they see Jesus smoking the joint? See, Islam, remember what the Quran said, Alif Ramin, this is guidance, sure. There is no misguidance in Islam. Respect the prophets. Why? Because you teach your children to do so. And when your children respect God and his prophets, they become successful. There is no double message in Islam. We take this very seriously. Why? Because we do not do it to anybody else. Muslims stood up and protested when they did that to Jesus and Mary. Did you know that? You did. This is Islam. The beauty of it. It is guiding sure. Please, if anyone did not have a Quran, please, brother, you got a Quran? Here, man. Okay. Pastor, to the brother. So, Alhamdulillah. So, we call you to sign our petition. Would you please sign our petition? Alhamdulillah. You put some of it. You know what you do? This is a gift to a God. You see, look, I want to show you something. May Allah bless the Muslim woman. Because many times the Muslim woman is more into the Sunnah than the man. And so I give blessing. I give blessing to I give blessings for God for the beauty of our Muslim women. That's honor. That's respect, my brother. That's respect right there. Now you compare to all the young ladies who are rolling around here and ask yourself, how do you want your daughter to walk around? How do you want your wife to walk around? So, we ask you, do we have a petition to sign? Okay. Please sign, have a petition. My brother, this is the petition. This is the petition to Barack Obama. Please read it to stop the rule to do these things, inshallah. So, we have here so now we understand each other on this aspect. Islam is not a religion that is made out to be. There is no such thing as a Muslim terrorist. There is no such thing as a Muslim terrorist. It does not make me a terrorist if you bomb me, if you kill me, if you destroy my land, if you destroy my right to practice my religion, if you do not allow me the freedom to seek a government and a religion that has been given to my forefathers, if you stop that, it does not make me a terrorist to fight back. It makes me a human being. It makes me a human being with a God-given right to fight oppression, to fight murder, to fight exploitation, to take care of the poor, to take care of the oppressed. That the same freedom that the United States asks of itself to follow its religion and its way, that it allows other countries in the world to do the same thing. This is a war against Islam. It is not just a war for resources, because the United States doesn't need a war for anybody's rights. The United States does not go to war for anybody's rights. It goes to war. Give me back. Give me one. Give me The United States. Come back. Come back. The United States does not go to war. The United States does not go to war. The United States does not go to war for anybody's rights. It goes to war for establishing spheres of influence. 
and goes to war for establishing spheres of influence. We want to run the oil. Now this goes back to 19 to 1897 and 1907 to the presidency of Roosevelt. They understood, the United States understood in the economic situation that it was in that it could not maintain its position by keeping its markets within the borders of the United States. That the United States had to go abroad to sell the excess material and product. It had to go abroad. So Vignetta was with the people. Vignetta was with the people. There had been one guy. And he believes in the teachings of the prophets. Let me tell you a little story. There was a man, I would like my brother, at some point after this, but you see, that you take the woman to the And what's done for my life? You have already one foot and a half in the sun. So these men would have me put to death because I have You have one foot and a half. Come over here. This is a drawing of Muhammad. These men want people killed because there's a drawing of Muhammad. Oh, officer, get rid of this guy. Okay, because. See? see? Now you see, this is what I'm talking about. You see, this is what I'm talking about. You don't have the freedom, sir, to mess with people in their religion. Okay? So you see this person right here, I give thanks to Allah. And I'm going to tell you the truth that that officer was there. Okay? Porque esto es desrespeto que yo estoy hablando. The Muslim would never draw an evil picture of Jesus, of Moses, because of Abraham, because we are taught as a part of the religion indeed of Islam to respect the prophets of God. The Holy Quran says we make no distinction between any of the prophets of God. We respect them all. Why is it that you would talk to this type of thing? I will not say anything against Jesus. I will not say anything against Jesus. I will speak of Jesus in terms of that he befits, of Moses in terms that he befits, and all the prophets. Nunca digo algo malo de ningún otro profeta de Dios. ¿Por qué un hombre hace eso con nosotros? So this is what I'm talking about, and notice what he is. Take a look at it. I'm going to tell you another thing about Christianity and about the lie of Christianity. They teach you in Christianity it's a religion of peace, a religion of turn the other cheek. But there has not been one, not one demonstration in 12 years by any Christian church, any Christian organization, any Christian movement to speak out against the war in Iraq. Not one. But a Christian, nosotros somos de la paz, love and peace and love and peace. Pero not one Christian organization has ever spoken out against the war in Iraq, the war in Afghanistan. In fact, let me tell you something, how we're so lost. The United States of America is involved in two wars. Go get her. And is getting ready to fight a third world war in Iran. But the United States fighting three wars has the to tell Russia to get out of Georgia. Imagine, the United States is fighting three wars, but tells Jordan, the Russians, to get out of Georgia. What's the word that we call grapes? Imagine, where we've got why? Because the American public, the American has lost his obligation to stand up and fight in the 60s, where I grew up, college students stood up and ended the war in Vietnam. They stood up and fought for civil rights. They stood up and died on college campuses trying to make a change. I ask you, as Americans, what are you willing to do to make a change? What are you willing to do to stand up, to support what's right, to end oppression, to end exploitation? Anybody knows where the verse is, please get it. The Quran says, Bismillah rahman rahim those that make war, against my righteous servants shall spend themselves into ruin. If you doubt that the Holy Quran is the veritable speech of God, he gives you a proof in the condition of humanity today what is going on. Give me a verse. Bro.